Welcome to another episode today. On this episode, I'll be covering day five of spearfishing in Mexico. On this day, we ended up going to a different area. It's full of sea mounts and jagged bottom. And I ended up starting pretty deep here, like uh, going on the edge of the sea mount, which is about um, 100 plus feet, comes up to like 60, 70 in certain areas here. And then I work over to another deeper area and back to like a shallower one, probably the shallowest one of this day, around like 60 or maybe 55 in some parts. You'll see me hunt there and then end up going to um, like an inshore spot, which was still like uh, full of current and it was about 70 feet. And that's where I ended up getting one of the best fish of the trip, if not the best fish that I shot. So I'll cover a couple different areas on this day. I mean, a couple of different species. You got grouper and snapper in this video. And overall, just a, a pretty decent hunt. Probably one of the best days of the trip. 
Thanks for watching and hope you all enjoy. After shooting this first Cabrilla grouper, I end up checking this area a little longer. It's a, like I said, it's a seamount, and I end up shooting that grouper right, right on the edge, at the about a 75, 80 foot part there. But after diving it for a while, end up not seeing too much else. Saw some trigger fish, which um, Taylor here, she's actually going down in search of them. But um, she's not able to get a shot on them. So we actually end up moving and checking some other areas here. Mm -hmm. Now we're at this spot over here, which is a little shallower. It's got some flat rocks in about 60 feet or so. Start prepping up in order to go down. Start uh, checking the area out first. I could see some bait fish. Some decent visibility. Hard to tell on camera, but from up high here, I could see a decent little cave next to one of these flat rocks here. So I head down to investigate. See his Kubera right here. He's already on the run. Another one here. Keeps trying to juke me though. Can't get a flat shot. This is my first dive. Just jumped out of the boat, so I'm trying to make the best of it. Mm, there. Decent shot. Got him out of the reef pretty quick. Didn't spend much time under, so got plenty of breath to come back up, fight him.
happy to have got the shot on this fish because if you notice they were pretty erratic already they were moving around a lot and they had been acting like someone had already been shooting at them Good eating size cabera, Pacific cabera, or they just call them pargo over there. On this dive, I prepare to head down and look around some more flat rocks. GoPro is a little blurry, so disregard that. Look inside of this ledge here, you see a cabria. Surprised how it didn't really react much, but once I pulled it out, I can kind of see what happened. If you look closely at this fish, you can see it's been shot before, but it wasn't a fin the same day, judging by the heel rate on it. Makes more sense why those cabarrus were acting the way they were after the first dive. Notice on the back of the fish. I asked everyone else I was with. Um, no one had shot it, and after looking at it, like I said, you see it's partially healed. Probably at least a day to you know, five days of healing. But it's always good to take fish out like this because when it comes down to it, they have less of a chance to make it by in nature. So. It's good you take that one out instead of a you know, healthy fish that has a still good chance at making it. This time, jumped in on a school of bait fish here. It's in over 100 feet of water, but you never really know what you'll see.
Best case scenario would be like a tuna or a marlin. Uh, you never know until you go in and check, of course. Taylor tries to dive down again on some trigger fish. But they're not having it. In this dive, I decided to go down towards the bottom. The sinuses were in pretty good shape, and I didn't mind going over 100 feet. So I figured I'd see what's underneath them. So I get underneath the bait fish here, I start seeing some um, dark shape on the bottom. First I think it's you know, a flat rock or something, but then I start to realize it's a Kubera spawn. I put a solid shot down with the gravity on my side and everything, but nothing happens. Can't say I'm surprised though with fish like this. They're just literally made out of armor, it seems like. You mark this spot, put me on here, okay? It's a Kubera. see what happened. I nailed one straight through the scale and everything right through the side but it didn't go in far enough despite having four bands. As I reload up um, <laughs> It's definitely pretty upset about that one, but I kept my head held high. I mean, the day wasn't over yet, so just reloaded and got back on the game. Nothing else you can really do. It happens to all of us, especially with Kabera snappers. Every diver knows that. Now we head further inshore to a pretty interesting ledge and rock spot. You can see the topography here. There's giant mountains and just a badass arid region. Have you seen a rock fall here yet? Gives you a good idea of what the bottom of the ocean looks like here. Not so much coral, but just more of just crazy rocks and peaks and everything. Jumping in now at this spot here, it's about 60, 70 feet or so, high current. Start my dive up drift. I gotta time it just right.
do a dive down just to get an idea of the layout. I see some rocks coming in the view here. Doesn't seem like much life, but this is the first dive, so just kind of get an idea. Seems like I hit the center of the area, which I want to be on the edge where it drops. So I head back up for another dive. Prepped up for a bit. I'm a little further down drift this time, so I can make my drop. I land right where I was trying to land. You can see it's <laughs> dropping off here, right out the edge of the peak. Looking around, I don't <laughs> see much at first. <laughs> then right here, quick shot of this Cabrera before it holds up. Couldn't really tell how big the fish was when I first shot, but you definitely seen the at least 20, 30 pounds. hit the surface and first thing I need to do is jump over on the float over here try to keep tension on it you can see the fish you know, try to get headway into the cave right away after the shot so I gotta counteract that the best I can now you can kind of see how much current there is now that I'm holding on to something stationary a good thing when it comes to um, covering large areas and everything but once you shoot a fish and you got to pull them back out again and you got to hold your breath and go back down there and get them it uh, makes things a little tougher as you see I'm not moving right now but it seems like I am it's just because all the water is flying by me to calm down. We got a big cabara in the rock. My buddy Ben jumped in. See if he could give me a hand. But he 
these surfaces right here because he had a sinus block. Continue to try best to calm down. Pull on the fish, as you just saw. Seemed like I got a little bit of a you know, slack back. He came out for a second. Yeah, I saw it. Seemed like the fish came out and then got caught again. I try to prep up to at least get a dive to see what all's going on. See if I can uh, pull it from where I'm at. What's nice about this region for the most part is uh, don't gotta worry about sharks quite so much. On day one, we did, but not when you're diving on this edge of Mexico. If we had to back home, I'd be worried that this fish would get slammed by a, either a glide grouper or a bull shark by now. So at least that's a good thing. I've got to really worry about that when I'm diving these parts. Make my dive down, see what's going on. Try to use my arms mostly. The more you use your legs, the uh, more energy you'll actually use in comparison to just using your arms. I reached the shooting line here. See the fish. He's pinned up, but he's outside the rock. Definitely a relief just to see the fish like that. He's outside the rock. Yeah. He's gonna swim to the side, I think he'll come right up. So the whole fish is outside the rock, the edge of this is like caught on it, you know what I mean? Can I shoot it with a real gun? It's like already outside the rock, I can't explain it. The cable's just sideways to it, so if we swim over there, it might even come out. Give it slack. Give it slack, you might go. Pull some tension off the float line. Bring the float back a little bit. Now I just need to get down there because it's not coming up from the surface. At this point, we're kind of going into overtime with the charter, and you know, this fish is stuck in the rock, so we really gotta start wrapping it up here. This doesn't help getting my breath ready and everything. I just have to work quick at this point. After some time, relaxing, getting my breath back, head down for another dive. It's darker as I near the bottom here. I hit the shooting line, I know I'm close. Tear the shaft right off the rock wall there. Pull this fish up. 
a great feeling that is so many cabarets you'll shoot and lose as you've seen earlier in this video. Awesome fish. It's cool seeing them all lit up like this, all the chromatophores and just the pigments. It's wild. Such a cool species. So much respect for this hunt. These fish are just one of the ultimate reef fish by far. This one may well be possibly my biggest Pacific Cabrera snapper and around half the size of my biggest Atlantic Cabrera. So I was definitely proud of this one. And just like that, pressure's off finally. In the charter and head back. Definitely got what I went out for. And that's it for day five. Pretty much the best day of the trip. I mean, besides like getting a record and everything, definitely one of the bigger fish in the pretty packed day. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Day six coming out next week, and that should be um, this whole Mexico trip. So thank you all for watching.